I want you to turn to two passages of Scripture, right? Ezekiel 34 and Mark 4. Ezekiel chapter 34 and Mark chapter 4. Uh, we're in a series uh, called The Holy Bible Beyond Words. And God is really pulling us back into the Word of God. And I want to encourage you, if you have children that um, are young children, I want to encourage you to buy them a Bible. Here's what we did. We ordered a, a whole bunch of Bibles uh, for both bookstores, South Lake and North Richland Hills. Uh, this is a study called the Adventure Bible. This would probably be for fourth through sixth graders. This is the NIV, actually the NIV Bible. This Bible is probably for third grade and below, even down to one or two years old, because uh, it has pictures in it like this and stories. And you could just read them a story uh, before they go to bed. One lady said to me, you know, I, I tried that, but he goes to sleep. Thank God. <laughs> you found something to put him to sleep. That's great. So, but here's the point. Even after he goes to sleep, just keep on reading the story. Because his spirit is listening. And I really want to encourage you to read the Bible to your children because it will bear fruit in later years. I also want to encourage you to do something else. This last 10 days, Debbie and I were very, very busy. Uh, we had a, a, a board meeting. I serve on the board of trustees for a seminary and spoke uh, in, a, in a two churches and then had another apostolic meeting uh, overseeing some churches and things like that. And I had a lot of people say to me, uh, Pastor Robert, uh, we're, we, we've really been praying for you because we know your schedule has been busy. And I thought for a moment, how do, how do they know? And then I remembered Twitter, <laughs> the miracle of Twitter. And so I, I thought about this. I would really like for every member of Gateway Church to uh, get on Twitter. And even if you're computer illiterate, you know someone who is computer literate. Have that person help you. If they don't follow you, you can keep your anonymity, I promise you, because I wouldn't have done it if you couldn't. But I think in a church our size, it is a great way for me to be able to communicate to you things that I want to communicate and for you to know where we are and you can pray for us specifically. So just go to twitter.com, sign up, and then I am Pastor Robert Morris or P.S. Robert Morris, all right? And uh, that way uh, we can get a lot of people praying for us, <laughs> and I would love that. And I appreciate uh, all of you who pray for us on a regular basis. All right, we're in this series called the Holy Bible. And I want to tell you, I know you're in Ezekiel 34, and I'm going to get there in just a moment, but I want to tell you how I got so hungry for the Word. Uh, I'd, I'd gotten saved, and I started doing youth meetings, and I was traveling with James Robison. And uh, most of us know James and Betty, they're members of the church here. And uh, I was traveling with him, and I was doing junior high and high school school assemblies on drugs and alcohol and things like that. And then I would invite the kids to the Crusades. And James began to uh, met someone that began to get him in the Word, and it started changing his life. And he just couldn't get enough of the Word. But he was started preaching on uh, demonic spirits and this spiritual warfare that we all go through. And so I said to him one day, Hey, um, I don't understand about all these things you're preaching about. And so he said, well, why don't you and Debbie come over to the house. We'll make some homemade ice cream, and we'll, uh, we'll just get in the Word. That was his, his saying at the time, we'll get in the Word. So we went over, and uh, we had some ice cream, and James started reading some verses. And I remember he read this one verse. Again, I know we're not there, but he read this verse. He'd been reading a bunch of verses, but he got this verse. Psalm 74, verse 3 says, Lift up your feet to the perpetual desolations, the enemy has damaged everything in the sanctuary. The enemy has damaged everything in the sanctuary. And so James said to me, um, who's the enemy? Well, I, I knew. Everyone knows that. I said, Satan. He says, uh-huh. And where does it say he is in? And I said, the sanctuary. I said, man, everyone knows that the devil's gotten into the church. I know that. And then he said this to me. Now, what I'm about to tell you might rattle you because it rattled me. Here's what he said. Point to the sanctuary. 
And I said, wait a minute. I said, are you telling me I got demons? He said, oh, man, you got a whole flock of them. <laughs> and it, it rattled me. He said, let's just keep reading. I said, well, let's get them out. He said, no, we just need to keep reading the Word. Let's just read the Word. Let's just read the Word. We need to fill our houses with the Word of God. Well, as he kept reading, I remember this because it's the first and only time I have ever let homemade vanilla ice cream melt. <laughs> but I was rattled, you know. But it began to make sense to me. All of a sudden, I, I started thinking about See, I, I was in ministry. I'd been saved a couple of years. I loved Jesus with all my heart. But now listen to me. I still had a lot of sin in my life. And it was bondage. I mean, I couldn't get rid of it. I was very insecure, very fearful, very afraid, very, uh, had a lot of rejection, had a lot of anger, bitterness, unforgiveness, had lust, even had some sexual immorality in my life. And I really loved Jesus, but I didn't know how to get free. And all of a sudden, it began to make sense to me that we have an enemy, and just because we're Christians doesn't mean that the enemy's not going to come after us. As a matter of fact, he, we are the ones he's coming after. You need to, to, to be alert, the Bible says. Your enemy, like a roaring lion, like a wild beast, is coming after you. You need to watch out for it. So here's what happened. We started seeing some symbols in Scripture. That's the title of the message uh, today, the symbols of Scripture. And I only have time to show you a few, just a very few. I, I do a seminar that I'm thinking about doing again where I, I, for eight hours I take people through all the spiritual symbols in the Bible. Would you like to go through that maybe? So I'm praying about doing that, all right? But So I've just got a few minutes to show you just a few symbols. But look at Ezekiel chapter 34. I want to show you these spiritual symbols, all right? Ezekiel 34 verse 1 says, And the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Now stop just for a moment. Look at me just for a minute. Do you think that God is telling Ezekiel, his prophet, to prophesy against literal shepherds? The guys that stand out there on the side of a hill with a stick and a dress, do you think that's who he's talking about? No. Who do you think he's talking to? Pastors, right? Spiritual leaders. 